Hi, welcome back to Community Hotline. My name is Monica Weitzel. We're here in Gresham at Metro East Community Media. Now we're going to be talking with Tamara Hickok, who is from Self Enhancement Incorporated. Self Enhancement has been in the community, in the North Portland community for years, mm -hmm. but now you're also expanding your services to East County. Yes. Nice to have you here, Tamara. Thank you for having me. You bet. Now, um, can you tell me a little bit, maybe for those who might not know, mm -hmm. about SEI, as it's more people often, often call it, um, and why it was started, and a little bit about the history and maybe the mission. Wow. Okay. All um, of that. Yeah. So one sentence, no. Yeah. Uh, Self Enhancement is a nonprofit youth agency targeted around prevention um, of prevention of services pre uh, for oh my goodness prevention of services for um, African American youth. In its in its uh, beginning in 1981, it started mm. out of a, a one week basketball camp. During the time um, as gang violence began to escalate mm -hmm. north northeast Portland, we had our first drive by shooting in 1988, oh. and that was uh, Ray Ray Winston. I remember. And at that time, uh, SEI then received our grant to become a, a year a summer program leading into a year round program. And from there, we just kind of grew, taking care of the Jefferson Cluster, mm -hmm. and we're at we were at Grant High School as well, and now we've moved out to East County. Wow, and, and it, it just keeps growing. I mean, yes. your, your programs. Now you're the high school program manager, correct? Yes. So, um, does that you're, you told me earlier that you cover the Grant mm -hmm. Grant High School, and then out here in East County, Reynolds. Mm -hmm. So it's Reynolds High School and also HB Lee Middle School. Yes. Right. So it's it's not just high school. It's not just uh, grade schools. It's it's everything. Yes. Now um, I know I, I grew up not. I mean I didn't grow up. I raised my kids not very far from where SCI is in North Portland, and you have a beautiful campus there. I mean it's yeah. lovely. It's really really nice. Out here in East County, you don't have your own campus. You're working with the existing mm -hmm. schools. Mm -hmm. Is that something that will change? You think in the future, or will you um, just kind of work? work in um, tandem with the existing schools. Is that well, the plan for now? Right, well currently we are, we have all of our staff is located within the school, but the future goal is definitely to have some sort of facility in East County for our students and families to attend. Um, one of the difficult parts of working within the school is finding space in a school mm -hmm. that already has 3,000 students. That's huge. Um, <laughs> as well as, you know, finding enough space within that for the varied staff that we have who all have different roles. So a parent coordinator who would need to have a confidential meeting with a parent, our student mm -hmm. coordinator needs to have confidential meetings with their uh, students, our after school program person needs to store and plan for after school program and meet with their staff. Right. So because of all the services we provide, we definitely would um, need another place to meet and hold festivities um, such as our parent meeting and our class meetings with kids and things like that right. so that we're not interrupting the school climate yeah. you know after school or during the school day so how does how does this work in which students are you working with at the schools and and how do they come to you okay so we are currently working targeting our african-american youth at both hb lee and reynolds middle school i mean reynolds high school um, basically Due to the gentrification in North Northeast Portland, a lot of our families have been relocated, many from the New Columbia area, to what we call the numbers, what we mm -hmm. lovingly yeah. call the numbers. Yeah. And out here, a lot of the students of families have not been able to find similar resources, similar uh, sense of community, mm -hmm. a similar sense of belonging as they have and remember in North Northeast. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the things I said when we first started was, I would definitely like to make our kids feel like there's a bridge to what they would consider a home as in North Northeast. And so our kids get a chance to connect, um, familiarize themselves with what's still there. And at the same time, parents need to know where they can shop, where they can go to get uh, emergency services, where they can go to receive help, or just to have a conversation within the school building with someone familiar to them or maybe familiar to their circumstance. Right. And that's one of the things that SCI provides. That's great mm -hmm. because I, I have seen that. I've seen kids out here that are, just seem lost mm -hmm. because they, they have lost that connection. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I, and, and certainly North Northeast has changed dramatically. Yes. So um, and there's a lot more nonprofits moving out this way, I think, and trying to serve the area out here. Mm -hmm. For example, the Boys and Girls Club, for mm -hmm. one, and Friends of the Children and different organizations, um, which mm -hmm. is a great thing. Do you work with a lot of other nonprofits? Do you uh, collaborate on things, or is it mostly just the other schools? No, absolutely. Within the school, we have um, our Sun provider uh, also that our SEI Sun provider also works with the other services that are within mm -hmm. the building. So we're in connection with and very close relationship with MFS, mm -hmm. um, NAA, uh, Metropolitan Family Services. Yes, Metropolitan Family Services, um, NAA, mm -hmm. the um, Native American. Native American yeah, Youth, youth uh, Association. Association yeah. or the Authority? It was Association. Well, it was 
family center, but I don't know. <laughs> We just call them now. Yeah. And then, um, and there's many others. Uh, Programo Hispano and uh, Hispana, I believe. And Which is part of the Catholic Charities. Part of Catholic Charities. <laughs> yep. And there are so many other programs that we are able to work with in order to make sure that students of color are served. The great thing about it is we all have the same mission of unity, mm -hmm. and so it doesn't exclude anyone, make anyone feel excluded. As in, um, okay, so we work with students of Latin descent, and so. Uh, we don't work with your group. No, all these students need the same thing. How can we come together with the same mind and then service everyone so everyone feels like they're getting it? So it's been a really great partnership Good. with the other services within the building. Good. Yeah. Now you, um, you mentioned, uh, we talked about the, the kids, and you said something about parents, you know, having a parents, mm -hmm. you know, teacher conference or whatever. What, I, I, I don't know if you answered the question about how the, how the kids get referred to you. I mean, oh. are all kids able to use SEI services or mm -hmm. how, how does that work? Well, at this current time, we service, uh, we service 36 students on an intensive caseload at Reynolds and 42 students on an intensive caseload at HB Lee. These students are case managed. They have a coordinator who sits down with them, who sets ISP goals with them as an individual success plan to help them work Thank towards you. their future. <laughs> and that also does uh, uh, case management on them, making sure that they have advocates within the building and all these things. And those are the students on a caseload. At Reynolds, we also have a second tier of students, which is our leadership program. Mm. And these students work with our leadership um, coordinator to help them do things a little more visible and public within the school. Mm -hmm. You know, when, again, and you're in a school of 3,000 students and you're one of 250 minority, it, you know, kind of got to do a lot of things to make noise to be heard. Yeah. And so they work together on having things like a Black History Month celebration that lasted for a week. Oh, wow. um, they work together on making sure students are acknowledged for their grades and academics. And then together in camaraderie, they are encouraging and pushing each other. Remember what we worked on. Remember these goals we set. I need to help you the get peer there. pressure is the yes. best. Positive peer <laughs> pressure, that, absolutely. Yeah, the positive peer pressure, exactly. And the way our students get into our program, um, we go by, we look to service the entire family. Mm -hmm. So if you have a sibling in the program, we'd like to take in that next incoming mm -hmm. sibling. Um, we also go by teacher referrals, as in a teacher recognizing this is a program that would benefit a student, mm -hmm. as well as counselor and other school staff referrals. And then there's just a coordinator being a part of the fabric of the school, recognizing that's a student that would benefit from, benefit from our program. And so it's kind of all these different hands going out there uh, trying to fill out and see where we can find our babies. <laughs> I love mm -hmm. it, find mm -hmm. your babies, that's good. Um, how long have you been in East County? How long has this been going so on? So this is, this, we are approaching our third year. Okay. Yes. I know it's rel relatively new in the yeah. total scheme of things. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you're making a difference? I, mean, I, you, I, I definitely yeah. do. Um, one of the big things that we're really trying to help with is our discipline, uh, discipline, uh, disparity and discipline cases for our students. Um, we see many times our students are receiving the referral, academic referrals, and then there's no conversation with a parent or an adult or an advocate on their behalf and it goes from referral to suspension and there's oh. been no conversation with a parent. And it could be on the side of a parent not feeling comfortable to come into the building or the school not having the right number or whatever yeah. that communication breakdown is, there's SEI. Oh, and so okay. we're working very hard to make sure that we minimize the amount of times our students receive referrals to leave the classroom as well as minimize the type of discipline they receive as in being suspended away from school some more or being suspended yeah. or even up to expulsion. So, so we try to so, be there. So why suspend somebody if the parents didn't even know there was an yes. issue? Yes. Let's start there. Mm -hmm. okay. Or if you haven't been able to get a parent to school all this time for their behavior or academics, then when this severe situation comes up, they're not going to show yeah. or the school is not going to bother to reach them. So we so try to be do? there every step of the way. What do you do like that? If you, if you just can't reach the parents and, and mm -hmm. or they don't want to be involved for whatever mm -hmm. reason, I mean, how much can you do? So one of the amazing things that sets SEI apart from a lot of social service agencies that we've, um, that we've worked with or that I've uh, encountered is the intentional parent piece. Most programs work with the families or they work with uh, a student and their whole family if the family is engaged. SEI has a coordinator for the student, but we also have a coordinator for the parent. And wow. one of the things in that is we say, you know, the, the student coordinator, if a child can't read, I'm mm -hmm. going to get you a tutor. But the parent coordinator says if a child can't read because the lights are off, 
that's where uh, I come in. There's a difference. And so the parent coordinator helps work with the parent to minimize the barriers from the student's success. Got it. So one of the great things that we do is in a situation like that is quickly we reach out to the parent. These two communicate. We reach out to the parent. We need you here. This is what's going on. And on the way into the office, I'm going to inform you of your rights, of your student rights. Here's a question you can ask. And whatever you need me to say, I got your back. And a lot of times our parents are a little nervous to go into yeah, the room. Imagine, Sometimes, you, yeah. know, they, you know, or if you only get a phone call that your kid's been in trouble, mm -hmm. here we go again. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and we try to send them in there confident. And if, you know, if they're there because uh, the, the lights are, are out, you know, they mm -hmm. might be feeling guilty. I'm mm -hmm. not providing for my family, but, you know, they're going to judge me, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. That'd be a mm -hmm. really difficult position to be in. Right. Yeah, and so. to go in there and try to stand on two strong feet and say, don't do this to my kid. Yeah. 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 Do you, um, can you, can you tell me about any, because you have a lot of one-on-one -on -one contact with the kids yourself. <laughs> mm -hmm. Can you tell me about, just, you know, no names, but tell me about uh, an example of, of some child that you've worked with that has benefited from being part of SCI. Oh my goodness. Whether it's out here or. Yes. Um, I can think of several. Um, one of the things, you know, that in order to work at SEI, just to say, one of the things that you have to be is a kid magnet. And yeah. in my 19 years, I have been extremely blessed to be a kid magnet. That's great. And I walk in the building, and the hugs and the love that you feel is amazing. Oh. And and uh, a kid I'm thinking of in particular, one I'll talk about at HB Lee. We have a young man that has had anger issues his entire time at HB Lee. He's now in eighth grade. He, uh, when we came, he was on half a day schedule because of his behavior. Mm. His so that's court, his punishment? Yes, it's, it's more so, it's more so uh, protective, more like his um, uh, um, safety plan. Okay. It's because okay. his behavior was not allowing yeah. him to be gotcha. around kids for a long period of time. Yet at home and away from, you would never ever know. You would kid? never know the situation. You wouldn't believe it. And so when we came in, um, he's, a, he, he's, a, he's a big kid. The coordinator we placed in there, and this is the very special thing that SEI does, is identifying the right people to put in the right uh, seat. Okay. And the coordinator who came in happened to be a large football player. Yeah, there you go. And this kid was a large football player. Connection right there. Put him on a football team at SEI, put him on the SEI football team, complete turnaround. Really? Complete turnaround. He's engaged, he's going to class, he's worked his way back up to three quarters of a day. Um, he set goals with his coordinator and his parents. I mean, his parents are totally involved. Oh, that's um, great. They've been, they've received emergency services to help them keep going. And through the summer program and the after school program, this kid is completely engaged. Wow. And it's I mean, it's just. I bet he's a lot different. happier too. Yes. <laughs> it's such yeah. a huge turnaround to watch. You know, as opposed to here he comes to yeah. hey here he comes. That's so yeah. great. That's that's. That's a beautiful story. That's the kind of thing you want to do. And we mm -hmm. make those connections one-on-one, -on -one, and then they will in turn pass it on to somebody else, yes. hopefully, when they, as they get older. Yes, that's, that's the hope. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Um, we don't have very much time. Yes. Is there anything else that we should know about SCI? If, if there are families at HB Lee or Reynolds, mm -hmm. and they're interested, and they think maybe their child could benefit from that, do mm -hmm. they have the option of letting a teacher know, or that you know, or they want to find out more about it? Right. So the way the program works right now, because of the uh, resources that we have are to serve at uh, each school, the current caseloads that we have, mm -hmm. the only place a student can get into the program now is at HB Lee, and that's incoming sixth graders. Okay. And as our eighth graders have gone on, we take in a caseload of sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. Mm -hmm. And so, excuse me, there'll be room for incoming sixth graders to participate. And um, the wonderful thing, again, about being a part of the fabric of the school, a parent can inquire about SEI and be a part of the after-school program oh. classes that are designed. Okay. We're working hard to design classes targeting our African-American students, okay. whereas there was not a hip-hop class, there was not a creative writing class that spoke their language, there was not a mm. fashion design where they dressed the way we did, right. there was not a, again, Black History Month program for our students. So yeah. you don't have to be an SEI to feel its effect. Oh, that's great, yeah. that's great. And just real quick, how are you funded? We are funded, our program right now is funded via uh, uh, it's called, uh, Reynolds School District, mm -hmm. um, United Way funding, or we also mm. have United Way funding, and that's a good one. <laughs> Got me. Uh, Reynolds School District and, and ODE, Oregon Department of Education. Okay, great, yes. great. Okay, thank you so much. I really appreciate you being on, Tamara, and I have a better idea now <laughs> about how actually SEI works in East County, so I'm so glad you're here. It's, it's a very needed service, so. Well, thank you for the much. opportunity. Yeah, you bet. Thanks for watching uh, this episode of Community Hotline. If you want more information about SCI, you can go to their website and check it out. I'm Monica Weitzel. We'll be right back in just a moment.
create a TV show of your own? Come check out the basic editing class at Metro East. Our trainers will give you the skills you need to flex your creative muscles. Using our state-of-the-art IMAX and Final Cut Pro 10, you can work with your own videos, add graphics and music, and even drop in cool special effects like green screen and slow motion. The best part? No experience is required. All ages and skill levels are welcome. Find out more on our website at MetroEast.org.